A skier died Sunday at Mammoth Mountain Ski Area. We're getting some information from a press release from MMSA that states at approximately 12.40 p.m. on February 3rd, a male skier, 49, lost control and fell in upper wipeout two. That's a double black diamond run at the top of Mammoth Mountain. Now the press release states that according to witnesses, the guest fell, slid down the chute, collided with a rock and continued to slide. Two guests who witnessed the fall were first on scene and began CPR. Press release states that Mammoth Mountain Ski Patrol arrived almost immediately after that to administer first aid and transport the guests to Main Lodge Ski Patrol. The individual was rushed to Mammoth Hospital Emergency Room where he died as a result of his injuries. And again, we're getting that information from Mammoth Mountain. Well, Bureau of Land Management investigators say they don't, don't want to say where or how, but they confirmed last Thursday that the petroglyph panels stolen from the major rock art site north of Bishop have been recovered and are in possession of the BLM. Discussions are underway with the Bishop Paiute tribe on how to handle the dissected panels. Now, the, BM, the BLM press release said petroglyph panels taken from major rock art site north of Bishop have been recovered. Suspects have not been identified and the BLM is continuing its investigation so cannot release further details at this time. Now reward funds totaling $9,000 have been or have been donated or pledged for information leading to the conviction of the responsible party and or parties. Now the damaged petroglyph panels at the site of the volcanic table Land were discovered in late 2012. Bernadette Lavada, BOM, BLM, Bishop Field Office Manager, said, quote, Recovery of the petroglyphs was a priority from day one. I am pleased that they were returned. Now we need the public's help to identify the vandals responsible for damaging this site, end quote. Now, anybody with any information about this theft is still asked to contact BLM law enforcement. And the phone number to call is 760-937-0301. That's 937-0301. Press release states that the suspect and or suspect may have experience and access to masonry cutting tools. Now, the petroglyph site is protected under the Archaeological Resources Protection Act and is listed in the National Register of Historic Places. The site is one of the most significant rock art sites in the region and is still used by the local Paiute tribe for ceremonies. Now, convictions on ARPA violations can result in fines and or prison terms. And in addition, ARPA provides for civil fines either in conjunction with or independent of any criminal prosecution and forfeiture, forfeiture of vehicles and equipment used in the violation of the statute, end quote. Well, last Thursday night, a 22-year-old Big Pine man sped away from a CHP officer, veered up Beer Road and off South Barlow Lane, and at 80 miles an hour could not make a right-hand curve. He flew off the road, struck numerous boulders, and was ejected from his vehicle, which burst into flames. Getting information that John L. Erickson Jr. of Big Pine died at the scene. Now, according to the California Highway Patrol, an officer saw Erickson driving on Brockman Lane south of Highway 395 at a high rate of speed. The officer tried to stop Erickson, who then accelerated and began to flee, according to the CHP. Officers said Erickson kept going on Line Street and then southbound on Barlow Lane, traveling at about 100 miles per hour. He made a right-hand turn on Beer Road and at about 80 miles an hour and that winding road heads up into Chipmunk Canyon. Now officers said the driver could not negotiate a curb to the right and flew off the south roadway edge into the desert. The car struck several large boulders and Erickson was ejected and died from his injuries. Bishop Area CHP officers and the CHP Multidisciplinary Accident Investigation Team that's MATE will continue to investigate this fatal accident. 
Well, Bennett Kessler filed this following report. Although no one will say it publicly, a series of three closed sessions held by Mammoth Town Council indicates that Town Manager Dave Wilbrecht is leaving. Some Mammoth people say they wish the shakeups would stop. And another closed session was set for today. Now, when asked about this last week, Mammoth Mayor Matthew Lehman said, I can't comment on anything right now. Mammoth Pro Tem or Mayor Pro Tem Rick Wood responded to questions about Real Wilbrecht leaving when he said, quote, I can't confirm or deny this. It's up to him. And quote, the town manager has not returned phone calls from Sierra Wave Media. Now, last week, the subject of the closed sessions was initial evaluation of the town manager. The next session agenda said the council would consider appointment of a town manager. And that agenda also said the council would hold a conference to, quote, consider discipline dismissal release of a public employee, end quote. Now that is the same language in yet another closed session that was expected to start at five o'clock today. Now asked if Mr. Wilbrecht would attend today's closed session, Mayor Lehman said he did not believe so, just the town council and its lawyer. Well, the restructuring of town government, as Councilman Wood said, has created a lot of anxiety. Changes have also put pressures on Wilbrecht and Assistant Town Manager Mariana Marashiva Martinez. Now, they've advocated many unpopular personnel and service cuts to balance the budget and make the annual $2 million debt payments to Mammoth Lakes Land Acquisition. Now, in the wake of, more cha uh, in the, wake of the changes, more employees, including police officers, and others have bailed out of Mammoth Town government for other jobs. Well, Bennett Kessler also filed this story. As Verizon drags its feet on a broadband project for Crowley Lake and Swall Meadows, the Mono County Board of Supervisors will send a letter to the California Public Utilities Commission to ask that Verizon be penalized for failure to complete that project on time. Now, the supervisors reason that the penalties should actually be some kind of benefit to nearby communities, such as broadband internet service for the community of Paradise or augmentation of cell service in Mammoth Lakes. Now, last August, the California Public Utilities Commission adopted a resolution which granted Verizon $286,398 for equipment to complete the internet service project for Crowley and Swall. Now, the completion date was January 28th. The last week, Verizon asked for a 12 week extension. Now, in the first place, Verizon was ordered to provide service to Crowley and SWAL as a penalty in lieu of a fine as a result of Verizon overheading a fiber optic line within the Highway 395 Scenic Corridor without prior approval. Now, the Mono Supervisor's letter says Verizon's time extension request is unreasonable and should be denied. They wrote that the residents have anticipated DSL service for 18 months and relied on the finish date. Well, the Mono Board also gave permission to Praxis, the digital 395 builders, to remove snow from Green Creek and Dunderberg Meadow Roads to access vaults to install fiber optic cable before February 15th when sage grouse begin to nest there. Now, Mono Supervisor Vice Chair Larry Johnston said the board also warned Praxis to follow the roads and do no damage on the way. They also asked Praxis to post signs that the roads are not open to the public. And as earlier announced, the board selected Public Health Director Linda Salcedo as acting county administrator while they go through the process to choose an interim CAO and finally a permanent administrator. We'll be back with more news.